Hi, this is Marissa Long with the U.S. Green Building Council. I'm here today with George Bandy, Vice President of Sustainability for Interface and USGBC's current board chair. Hi, George. How are you today? Hi. How are you? Things are great. Awesome. Excited about the show. That's great. Um, well, we're so happy to have Interface at Greenville 2014. You know, when we talk about Interface, we really talk about Ray Anderson's legacy yeah. as the founder of your company. Can you talk a little bit about what his legacy means and how it's being incorporated into what you're doing at this year's show? Sure. Uh, Ray was an amazing thinker, and the things that he talked to us about early on were about measurements. Uh, and then those measurements turned into more innovative and creative thinking. And that has evolved to like beautiful thinking for us. Um, sustainability doesn't have to just be grainy and normal and plain. It also is about beautiful thinking. Nature is beautiful. And so we've tried to evolve to a place of beauty in the way that we design our products, in the way that we mimic nature in our manufacturing processes, how we reach out and extend ourselves to others in the community, and also connecting all three parts of the sustainability journey in a much more intimate way. And so uh, Ray's famous quote uh, a while back was, you know, when, when love met common sense. And so to us, that means that there's a level of beauty around sustainability that needs to be evoked as we kind of move forward. And that's exciting for us. And we hope that we're exemplifying his legacy in the way that he would have us do it. And we're proud of the fact that he is uh, the legacy of our organization. That's great. And can you talk a little bit about how Interface is working to reinvent the supply chain and the work that you do? <laughs> yeah, we've been doing a project uh, in the Philippines called Networks, where we've partnered with the Zoological Society of London, which is an unusual partnership for us uh, to partner with a nonprofit organization, uh, and also with one of our largest manufacturers, Aquafil, to look at fishing nets as a resource for us to make new carpet products. It's the same product, and it's a global issue with the fishing nets being in the ocean and causing consternation in different areas around double core barrier reefs. And so we developed this project in the Philippines where we're casting the fishing nets back out of the oceans when the fishermen are either through with it or collecting them off the shores. And we're taking those products back to our manufacturer and turning them into new beautiful products that we're making at the manufacturing facility. So we're trying to connect that social level of really the thought of beautiful thinking and passing that on to our supply chain, which gives us a different avenue to be able to have the conversation unusual conversations with the supply chain. Usually you're beating them up about price. In this particular instance, you're beating them up about beauty. And so we're connecting the dots in a lot of different intimate ways, and we're excited about that. Interface is also uh, one of the uh, founding sponsors of our Green Apple Initiative through our yeah. Center for Green Schools. Yeah. You also currently serve as board chair. Can you talk a little bit about what your relationship to USGBC means to Interface and means to you? Sure. Um, the relationship is so significant. Ray was an early adapter and a strategic partner with USGBC in its early stages and uh, we've been aligned with USGBC and spawning small chapters uh, throughout. Uh, the, the, the stuff that's going on with the Center for Green Schools and Green Apple is so near and dear to us. Melissa Vernon heads that up for us. She does an amazing job of connecting projects. We do projects globally on the Green Apple Day of Service. We continue those projects. We do legacy projects internal to the organization that are based around the same type of concept of doing things in the community to bring about value in a much more intimate way. Uh, and we're trying to inspire this level of thinking that creates this feeling of beauty around these same projects that we do because it's beautiful in a lot of different ways, not just in the tactile or the kinesthetic way that people feel it, but it's also in the way that people think about themselves, how they feel about where they work, live, and play, how they feel about places that they're educated in. And that's much more important to us because that promotes that level of next innovation from that generation that's coming beyond. So that uh, work for us is a significant part of who we are. That's great, and we appreciate everything you guys do. <laughs> Thank You're you. also highly involved with the LEED rating system. Yes. Um, what are some of the projects that uh, Interface is really proud of uh, that are using LEED? Well, we've got the Chicago showroom that was just certified LEED Platinum. We've got the Atlanta showroom, which we think is going to come back LEED Gold. Uh, we're also expanding, as you know, USGBC is expanding, looking at LEED projects internationally. So we've got a project in Toronto, one of our showrooms in Toronto, and a project coming up in London that we're looking to also certify around the LEED. And we've already got one in China. So um, we're we're looking to have more of a global output uh, around thinking around LEED and how we begin to look at those aspects. Our manufacturing facility in China is also LEED certified. So uh, our process is how do we cascade this information and then begin to raise and elevate the actual impact for us is on the people. 
uh, the people who are coming in our showrooms to look at our product, the people who work for us, the people who are actually in the manufacturing plant, how do we create that level of beauty for them inside of the spaces that they work, work in every day to try to evoke some different type of innovative thinking. That's where all of our suggestions for this next iteration of sustainability come from. It's from the plant floor, from inside of the workspaces where people have the freedom to be able to look at things in a different way. And LEAD definitely fosters that type of behavior by creating the type of atmospheres that are conducive for that. So we're excited about the opportunity to continue down that pathway and develop more projects. And LEAD V4 is an amazing way to do that. Uh, and, and it's been great to see how Levy 4 has evolved to move from just measuring things to measuring more of the collective LCA look at how we begin to evoke uh, the lead process. So it's been good for us. That's great. Um, and just one last question, um, since we're here at Greenbuild. Sure. Um, is there anything that you want to make sure our Greenbuild attendees know about Interface and the work that you guys are doing? Absolutely. Uh, I, I think that uh, one of the questions that we used to hear is like, um, now that Ray has passed a couple years ago, kind of what are you doing now? Um, and one of the things that Ray used to always talk about is um, leadership is overrated. And it's really about the first follower. And um, his passing really had everyone else had to elevate themselves to kind of understand what his leadership was truly about. And his beautiful thinking was already out there. And all we had to do, we had a road map for thinking more beautifully, David Oak and his designs, in the manufacturing process, in the sales process, in the marketing process. All we had to do was embrace that and begin to create more followers that really understood what Ray's vision was about. And that goes beyond the walls of Interface. I think that his vision was bigger than Interface, and we continue to try to cascade that moment. And being the board chair has allowed me to cascade that to other people on the board and in the organization and partner with different companies in a different way. But I think that internally, we've kind of really embraced the fact that we are that legendary part of Interface that Ray wanted us to be. And we're learning to be that more and more every day. And we're humble about that, but we're also really, really confident about the fact that we have a significant place in this particular marketplace. So we're excited about that, and we want to see everybody have a good time at Greenville, come by the booth, and uh, enjoy the show. It's an amazing place to be. And uh, welcome to New Orleans, and don't spend too much time on Bourbon Street. Great. Thank you so much, George, thank for you. taking the time. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it.